Oh my God. Hi guys, it's Chris and once again we're back with a whole bunch of Amiga stuff. What do we have going on today? As you may or may not have seen yet, I did a repair for an Amiga all the way over there in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And the owner has sent me two more things to check out. Just a couple things in this box that I'm going to put on the floor because I have no physical room. My desk is an utter wreck because it's been the repair of 16 from hell. So this is from Mr. David. Hope you and your family are doing well. All the boards labeled number one are yours to do with as you see fit. Boards labeled number two, please send back to be placed in the case I have here. Number two. So we're going to pull out number two, which is usually what they look like. This says for number two. This is an Amiga 2000, number two. So what do you think it's going to be? I say it's probably a Rev 4. Oh, it's six with a mega chip. And a bad, oh, 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 crimson glory. Okay, so we have a Amiga 2000 with a 8375 DKB mega chip and the Gary 36. The battery's still on it. Green as a cucumber, leaky, wet. And ST CPU 68000, 1.3 ROM. No, no, I'm sorry, 204 ROM, one mega chip, two mega chip. Super Denise, ECS chipset, regular Paula, Gary, CIA's buster hanging out over here in the corner. Uh, very dirty, but that's okay. Does it work? I don't know. Original Elma and showy caps are hanging out on the board, relatively straight. J101 is jumper for one meg, and that way you have R105 for the slow chip ram down when DMA access. No jumper on that. 301 is not jumper. J300 set for internal tick. And we're rusty and green around the keyboard connector. Super green. Uh, the battery acid has leaked all over the place and I'm sure it's underneath and still juicy. So I'm going to leave that alone for a minute while we check out what else is in this box. Does this board suffer from board flex? Little bit, but not much. Put this actually to the side real quick. This is a green thing. So it's two cards. This is an Alpha Data IDE tandem IDE CD ROM connector. This is a Fast ATA 4000 from LBOX computer. I could use those IDEs, I'll tell you that much. Number two, this is a Believe time based corrector for toaster. Number two, not sure what it is. Okay, but it's going back with that. This says toaster. For one of them, okay, we'll just keep on digging. Hard drives, floppy drive, I guess that's for this. Uh, looks like another something card. A lot of BNC, this is missing its stuff. I think this might be an early ArcNet card. Let's, let's unwrap this pickle and see what we got. Or is this an ISA card? It looks like an ArcNet card though. 10 base T, thin net, interesting stuff. RGB and video computer from VMT, copyright 1992. More Zilog, so it's probably from the same company. Uh, is this for some kind of time-based correction thing? Because we got all the BNCs. Uh, let's keep going. Not sure what this is. Let's see. Kind of like Christmas open these packages. It's really fun to see the old tech come to life again. High-speed serial port. This is the... Uh, I, know what the I know exactly what this is. This is a GVP IO extender. It says customer support on it. <laughs> this gives you a high speed uh, serial and uh, parallel with options for two more and another one inside. Higher than 38.4 of the Amiga's regular serial port. They had 165, uh, 16550 UARTs is what they were called. Uh, There's a couple optional ROMs in here. I'll have to double check what this has, if it works still. But yeah, this is an IO extender port to give you another parallel and serial. You would use these with a bulletin board system if you needed to hang additional modems off the back. DPS, TBC. We have two TBCs connected via a uh, RS-232 pass-through for DHE2 and this will be DHE1. 
So multiple time based correctors for multiple signals for that video toaster. Low pass band filter cans. Wonder if you could take those off and save Amiga 1200s and 600s on their component composite videos. Sometimes these are useless nowadays with modern video solutions unless you're really going to rock a toaster in its 320 by 240 glory SD resolution. Looks like an accelerator card. Yep, GBP Impact Series 030, 40 megahertz, perfect condition, 63 pin SIMS, four on or one or four on board, not sure. 4.5 ROM, 1992, Amiga 2000, 030. Nice card. You can see clearly it's really good shape. SCSI uh, back has some paper stuck through the pins because this entire thing was packed in shredded paper. That made a mess of everything, including my floor and myself right now. For, I presume it's for this machine. Connor hard drive, FB354, that probably as dry as the desert. SCSI drive of Seagate, 180 megabytes. Woohoo! Look at that. Thin jobber too, 180 megs. We got a lot of things to test. There's also a toaster down here. But, you're screaming at the screen. I hear, what was that? Yes, I'm going to cut the battery out. We'll do it right now. But I got to make some room. I'm trying to find a spot. You can see my floor. I have 16 repairs. I have a pretty decently sized studio, but when you fill it up with my Amiga fleet and all the boxes and stuff, the entire Firebird in the garage is filled super high with the shipping boxes that all the stuff came in. And I have all the parts tagged in bag with your notes and what needs to be. Let's get this shielding off. They're rusty, they've been wet. Ooh, that's got rust coming through the hole. That's always good. Now the metal looks pretty good, but like I've always said, you're not the first person to put your fingers in her. Uh! Guarantee. I can tell I'm not because this board has already been bent. So we're gonna pop this down, listen for the and then we can lift the board out. Oh my god. This isn't the biggest bag over the head. I'm hiding the board for a second. We have a problem here. Oh no, that is bad. I have some ammonia-based Windex right here. We're just going to just put a little bit on there. And uh, let it sit long enough and it is both on the top and on the bottom so whatever was wet on here was on the top and has literally put rust marks on the ROM and the CPU line but worse than that is it's underneath of this so yeah this board has gotten a little wet it was in a wet t-shirt contest and uh, you can see the amount of damage that is wetness here now this will clean up a lot of surface based crap I'll have to clean it several times it's stained and rusty and holy crap it's literally rust so it's had a little bit of moisture to it but all that can be scrubbed out. I'll go stick this in the bathtub or something and have a talk. Drink some wine. You can see the dots going down where the chips were just, just soaking in there like a soup. Prepare yourself. This might take me just a little bit longer than normal. God damn it! We have rusted, rusted out chips and I'm gonna have to put a socket in it anyway and here's the power and there's something growing up here it's some kind of white wet something that is coming out of the diode damage and damage in the clock circuit and the battery and the funny thing is is the battery looks great <laughs> it's it's the it's the water that it was sitting in. These are the bamboos for Mr. Jonathan. Now this will come clean. 
this will clean up. It's just scary to see all this rust on the board. The reason I'm using these bamboo bad boys is you can press on them like they owe you money. I'm gonna get the plastic brush. So I have three of them. I have a plastic, I have a bronze, and I have a steel. Depending on your level of corrosion. Since this is a circuit board, I'm gonna scrub this with the plastic brush. Two hours later. Have you brushed your Amiga today? You can see the line of rust. The fiberglass pen doesn't F around, baby. I bet you this is the only time you guys are happy to see Lorena. One. Two. Oh man. Three. Oh yeah. That's uh that's that's great. That's great. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have never seen a socket creep this much green in my entire life. There's been, look, there's 400 videos on this site, over 400. And I'm always talking about 1 through 6, you know, 64 through 60, the bottom little bits. But, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell how green this is, but we're going to zoom in. And, Jesus, God. So, it is green the entire, yeah, you can see the green now on your, this side, what, left. So, just all the way up just all the way up and this side not so much down to about starts tinging right there right near past the resistor pack bloop all these are gone they're not going to work you know they're all effed up because when you sit in battery acid for 35 years electrolytics from caps potentially things can happen well you ain't got no legs lieutenant dang so I'm not even effing around with a pre-fire test flight because it's not going to work. We're going to break her back. In advance. Just... I do this, A, for my own ease. You could even snip it more and cut this into multiple sections. So when you're doing the solder sucking additions, removals, you are removing small sections. You don't have to remove all of these pins at once. You can do them in little bits, which is what I usually do. J102 is broken right in the center of your screen. This is normally bridged together for one mega chip. This, along with its brother, J101 here in the northern position, is one mega chip RAM. Since this has a DKB, you jumper a wire to Gary 36 or CPU 48, in my preference. That is address line 20. That's the XRAM interrupt signal, and that's what gives you two megs of chip through this uh, two megabyte Agnes and this adapter board, which pin outs the 8375 VBB variable based bullshit to work on these 2000s and 3000s. <laughs> we'll change tips in advance. I gotta put the fat one on. She needs the big one. That's what she said. Okay, so as you can see here, solder has been added to these pins. Fatten them up so Electric Mona can put her lips around this pole. Ah. You need to have something to suck on. You can't put a tiny one in there. The girth of the mouth of that solder sucker will not do well. Plus, the acid damage from the battery will then uh, chemically change this solder into this concrete type of stuff that will not melt under extreme heat. And by adding in fresh solder on top of it, chemically rejuvenates it into something that will melt. Now, I give it a wiggle on my finger back and forth that is also how my fingers are always also cut up it also makes sure the solder is broken free and we're gonna pull these puppies out and see what they look like one two now I'm gonna hold them in my crusty hands just to show you the level of funky cold Medina and there 
You're thinking, that doesn't look that bad, Chris. Well, they're supposed to look like this. So now can you see the green? All the way up. Yeah, supposed to look like that. Onward to the board we look. Holy Christmas cards. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh... Somebody better call an exorcist. This is some scary shit. I'm going to Windex it. It has ammonia in it. It'll help me defunkify the funky cold Medina. Just get into the sockets. Just... That ain't melting for nothing. There we go. Let it just sit in there a little bit so I can feel a wiggle and... Bingo. Boom. What happens is that solder turns into concrete. Oh, a little bit of excitement here on the table. So now we have cleaner holes, like this pizza's falling in my hand, but cleaner holes. Okay, you can at least sort of see, see the stuff. Are we done? No, man. Fiberglass pens are self-destructive, meaning they break down on their own. They are a mild abrasive, but you can rub it over a spot like that, it will really clean up the pigs. I just did those three battery posts and around the bottom of this resistor pack. Look, now you can clearly see the metal and it's not damaged. The three lines for the RTC over here are intact. Well, two lines on the Rev6. Still rocking Mr. Hooper's 100 proof. These cleaned up really nice. It's amazing what a little bit of work will do you. In all my years, I've never seen somebody write inside the CPU socket. Who put this board together, Commodore? Number 15 did. One, five. There you go. Or somebody signed their name. And you can see that RP right there, resistor pack. All those vias clean up real nice in the battery post. And that one bubble we had. Uh, so, fiberglass pen again, a couple clicks on the other side. CPU lines look good. All the pins or, or the vias for the uh, new pins will now accommodate a socket better. I'm going to be using my American made uh, Cambian sockets. They are the ones with the captain tape on the bottom. Some of you love them, some of you hate them. As you can see here, we have a brand new 68,000 socket. Here is the CPU of crustiness. I'm going to take a fiberglass pen, lay my finger in it, and use it as a backstop so I can scrub the pins. Looking better, but it is actually stained on the... I can't really see it. This side, great. The other side, S. I'm going to use my uh, 68,000 on a riser board in the CPU socket. That just goes in like this, bypasses this socket. Let's me see if I see anything. Different CPU also. There's diagram. So our CPU was toast. I don't have a mouse to click. We don't have any video on the screen. It's still testing. Memory is installed. We have no display. Oh, there it's glitchy thinking about it. No key press disabling serial. Alright, so is the CPU dead or is it just this adapter that's hanging on by a thread? Let me get a mouse. So we got diagram over here at least and you'll see that thing start to come on. There's the start to come on which is great. There's our there's diagram. Okay. And I lost it. So two makes a chip. The DKB is functional. Let's check out the component video. This is only black and white on the 2000 because it doesn't have the Chroma Luma combiner chip. But it'll let me see if... Well, never mind. Alright, so we don't have any ghosting. Um, we're going to do a CIA test. Our Q fine, test CIAs. 
Screen will flicker during test. Okay. 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 Okay, okay. Now that's odd for an NCSC Amiga. Now I did have to solder back J102 together. I don't know why it was soldered apart, but it looks whatever. So we're good on that. Good. Let's play the waveform. Not bad. Monitor again. But that's what my CPU. All right, so we'll turn this off. That's going to stick on the screen because it's serial. I'm going to pull out diagram. We're going to put in the owner's ROM. We have composite, but we don't have any display on RGB. That could be this adapter here. This thing is flaky. It's meant for your 4000. This is an Amiga 2000. I'll try my other one. Supposedly, there's an Edu Arana one that's like really good, but. He doesn't sell it. It's not on his website. I can't get it. I think my pins could be bent because I've put this plug in many holes. Comes out. All right, let's turn this off. We know it boots. I'm going to put diagram back in its container here. All right, so I hooked up the 2000 to a 1084S here. I'm going to turn this overhead off so it's not such a glare. The one behind me is still on to illuminate my lovely face. Let's hit it. GoTech is in. Amiga Test Kit is in the drive. This board should be fully functional now. New CPU socket. Amiga Test Kit is loading. And as you can see here on the screen, there we go. You might see some hertz and hertzes. Uh, I'm going to test the memory first, just to make sure it's good. Test all RAM. Look how clear that picture is. That looks incredible. The purple is beautiful. I'm going to let this go to about 4. That's about 4. Test CIA. Perfect. Audio. Perfect. Controller ports, left, right. Mouse is perfect. No stuck buttons. Battery backed up clock is detected. Here's the GVP. Beautiful condition. A little bit of scuzz on the pins. I'm going to take a fiberglass pen and just kind of touch them. So with the GVP booting, we got a 6830. That's cool. A little more. 6830, 882. Let's hit this memory. 8 megs on board. 4 megs. What? Two megs a chip. So the board has four megs built in, right? The card itself has eight megs, two four meg SIMs, and we have two mega chip. 40.3. MMU is not in use because I don't have the libraries. So we have yet another Amiga has been saved. This one is going to meet its master with the Amiga 4000 that I have to ship all the way on the other side of the world here. So as you can see, this Amiga lives again. Thank you guys for coming along on this extended journey of a CPU fix and general butt wipe. So that's all I got for now. Thank you guys for coming along on this extended journey. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.